Well, guys, it's that time of year again, yeah. Christmas. Oh, word of electronics repair. So you'll probably see a few videos like this and then something special for Christmas Day, of course. So what do we have? Well, these are some of my Christmas lights. I've had them for many years. And every year I take them out and I find something isn't working. And this year it's this lot. And I haven't got everything out and tested yet. So there may be more things that I need to fix. But this one, so let's have a look. The, here is the controller. It does have writing on it. It's just hard to see. There. So you can see 24 volts AC. Yeah, one amp. 24 volts AC, one amp. If you can just read that there. So that's what it needs. I have it attached to this thing. So I suspect, I think some years ago when I moved over here, I didn't have the right power supply. This was originally a DC power supply, you can see there. Plus and minus. And the reason it's all taped up is because I took out the bridge rectifier or diode and capacitors, and it now gives AC. I'm nothing but resourceful, hey guys, yeah. I mean, you could say just go and buy some more, I would say. Let's see if we can fix these and then go buy some more anyway. Now I'll have even more lights. <laughs> yeah, that seems like the better plan to me. So AC. And I've just plugged this into the power supply. We have 20 volts, so it's a bit low, but that should be fine. But when I plug this in, I have nothing, yeah, nothing happening. So that goes into this little controller and then that flashes the lights. So we can see we have power coming in here, one, two, and then this will be effectively one common plus a channel one and channel two going out. So let's see why it doesn't work. I noticed the little thing that goes there is broken or fell off on this. That just selects the sequence or pattern but it should still work i would think oh look at the top comes off oh and that's what we have <laughs> so yeah this plugs onto there because these are ac these will be thyristors scrs yeah pcr they called 406 they're thyristors so the controller which is on the other side in fact no it's there under that blob that just flashes these and various patterns. This is where the little control went and that's a bit, well, broken, we can see. Okay, but it's making a contact on there, so at least some pattern should be working, I guess. Let's see. First obvious one, do I have power here? Yes, so power's getting to there. That's a bit difficult to connect to here while I'm testing, but I think we can figure out how to do it. Yeah, something like this actually probably do the job quite nicely. So I just need to get these pins out. I did actually buy some of the proper tools for this, but I'm not totally sure where they are. So let's just try it this way. So push inwards on the two little tabs. Yeah, yeah. One way or another. It's a bit too wide, I think. Uh. It's funny these. <laughs> when you want to get them out, you can't. But like when you don't, they often fall out. You know that, yeah. How does that fit into the uh, thing? Uh, not easily. Plan B. So we can see here we have two wires coming in. This is the power AC and then we have three. So looking at this, these two are the AC input and then one of these will be a common and the other two are the two channels out. Okay. 
So our EC comes in here like so. You might hear some noise today, by the way, guys, because the band are practicing outside, but we'll see. Hey, <laughs> let's see. So, this is the AC input. That is probably the common, and then these are your two channels. Looks like this PCB, yeah, because it was designed to have two more thigh vistas and four channels. Okay, so one, two, three, four. I'm picturing this as the common connection. So this is a bridge rectifier. This is a fuse. Fuse is okay. And we have a capacitor. So I think we can say that the bridge rectifier charges the capacitor. These two resistors are different values. So I don't think they're driving these, they're doing something else. So looking at this, we have two anodes don't connect to each other. We have two cathodes, so that is the positive output of the bridge rectifier. So this must be the negative output of the bridge rectifier. The two anodes together is the negative. And then we'll have one cathode to one anode. That's one of the AC inputs, and then the other one is here. Cathodes around there. See, we should have a positive supply voltage. Just make sure these don't short to each other, of course. Okay. Plug this in. Let's see. So there's the AC supply coming in, which will go here to here on the bridge. Yes, then if we go to DC, we should have negative positive. Yeah, there's your DC voltage. That should charge this capacitor. Oops, not the camera there. Does that go to the capacitor? You think so? Yeah, totally the bands were practicing today, yeah. Hmm. It's very hard to get to that though. Yeah, I can see that one end of the capacitor here, by my finger, show you. This end goes to here and that is the two anodes that's the negative end of the capacitor in fact we can see that okay that goes here and then the positive output from the bridge rectifier which is these two cathodes which is here goes out on the common to the leds okay we can see that so that'd be like a pulsed dc and comes via a resistor to here. So this resistor here to here reads 26.6k and that goes to the positive end of the capacitor. Okay, and then the other end negative goes to here. So what we have is we have the controller running on smooth DC via that 26k resistor this is the positive end of the led strips but like i say they pulsed because the bridge rectifier there's no capacitor on here and then it returns back to here through these triacs or the thyristors and then the other end of the triac or thyristor must go to the negative end which is here There, I would assume. Yeah, it does. It goes to there. And we can see that the gates here and here are being driven by this module. So that's what we actually have. Let's see then. Do we have any voltage across the capacitor? Yeah. 
In fact, that matters. Do we have a shorter capacitor capacitor? No, it doesn't mean short. Okay, it means high resistance. The resistor itself, you can see there, red, violet, orange. The colour balance isn't very good on this camera, but I'm sure that's what it is. Yeah, red, violet, orange, so that is 27K, which is exactly what it reads. And that, as we know, goes to the capacitor. So, let's see. Do we have a power supply getting into this thing? Just make sure these are not going to short. Set to DC. Volts and measure. Well, either across the capacitor or we could just as easily measure from here. Which is there. That's the negative end. To this end of the resistor. So this is your rectified AC. 16, 17 volts. And this is the output. And this has 3.3, which is about what you'd expect. 3.3 volt supply. So that's got power. Anything happening on the gates? So here. That looks like it's switching. Can you see it? I mean, the gate voltage would be low. That one. Okay. So it appears to be we have a problem maybe in the wiring to our LED strips, which is here and here. So that's going to be switching basically like a 24 volt supply. Yeah. With the common being positive. Which is that pin zero. So, yeah, this goes on this way. So if I connect positive in my bench power supply to here, touch the negative on here or here, with around 20 volts or thereabouts, it should light up the uh, lights. Uh, so I'm going to connect DC, but bear in mind that this really is just like pulsed DC because it's rectified. So the reason we have the pulse DC is so that the thyristors will switch off automatically every time it comes back down to zero. Okay, It means the little controller on here only has to send a pulse to turn the LEDs on and it will stay on until the next time the cycle goes to zero, which is 100 times a second. Because rectifying the AC effectively doubles the frequency. Right, so I'll set that to 24. Positive on the common. And they light up. And that also lights up. So they're lighting up. So that isn't the problem. Have we got faulty thyristors, both of them? Because if the thyristor turns on, that's exactly what it should do. Yeah. It should just effectively connect this point to ground. So this is your common ground. Look, it goes all the way around here. Comes back to the negative of the bridge rectifier. And we know we're getting pulses driving these. But nothing's switching. Hmm. The other possibilities, I just have bad connections in here. I mean, they're a little bit loose. I'll connect the AC supply to the lights of the transformer. Okay. We'll just try and waggle this a little bit. Ah! Look.
There. Okay. So the problem with this is just the connection between the PCB and these. <laughs> well, that should be a fairly easy fix. You just... Uh... Squeeze these a little bit. Hopefully get a bit of a better connection. Okay. Pull our board in. Connect our power again. Ah, you're working. Okay, so guys. Come on, that was quicker than going to the shops to get another set. It was cheaper because we've got it working, but you can still go to the shops and get another set with the money you save by not replacing these ones and have another set of something, yeah. And let's face it, just like multimeters, you cannot have enough Christmas lights. You can never have enough Christmas lights. Hope you enjoyed that. Not only did we fix it and save a bit of money and save a bit of time, we also, hopefully, some of us, improved our skills of just diagnosing, almost reverse engineering this in the heads, yeah, to get it working. I'm sure there'll be some more Christmas lights to fix this year, but that's the first set. Okay, look forward to seeing you all soon on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.